if you've heard anything about Gaius, one thing that you might have heard is this strange episode in which he is alleged to have made or wanted to make his horse in Gitatus a consul. So what on earth do we do with this? Is this simply a sign of madness? Do we even believe our sources? Let's have a closer look, because this is the one thing that everyone thinks they know about Caligula, or about Gaius, and I think probing a little further is a helpful exercise in testing the limits of our sources. So let's start with Cassius Dio. If you are on page 72 of the Lactal volume, you'll find the translation of this. And here is what Dio says. And this is in a, uh, a list of sins and crimes of Gaius that start with murdering people to raise money and fiddling around with gladiatorial games and holding auctions, which is rather undignified, uh, of gladiators. So we're already in the world of the circus and the arena. And then we get to this. Um, he later poisoned the best and the most famous gladiators, and he did the same thing with horses and charioteers of rival factions. He was a, green, a keen supporter of the Greens, or the Leeks, whose name was taken from the frog green colours that they wore, so much so that the area in which he used to practice driving chariots is still to this day called the Guyanum. So this is an emperor who's obsessed with chariot racing and has his favourite colour, the, the team who raced in green. And we think forward to Nero, who also disgraced himself with chariot racing. This is sort of a bad emperor trope. Um, moreover, one of the horses, which he called Incitatus, he would even invite to dinner. He would serve him golden barley, pour him wine in golden goblets, and even swear oaths by his health and his fortune. He even promised to appoint him consul. He certainly would have carried this out if he had lived for longer. So Dio situates this story in the context not really of Gaius's dealing with the senate or the magistracies but in his obsession with the arena with gladiatorial games and then he he makes this strange aside that Gaius uh, would have um, uh, appointed his horse consul um, and would have done it if he had lived for longer. So that's Dio's account uh, and this story is clearly doing the rounds because other authors pick it up it too. Here is Suetonius, Life of Gaius 55. He used to send his soldiers on the day before the games and order silence in the, in the neighbourhood to prevent the horse Incitatus from being disturbed. Besides a stall of marble, a manger of ivory, purple blankets and a collar of precious stones, he even gave this horse a house, a troop of slaves and furniture for the more elegant entertainment of the guests invited in his name. And it is also said that he planned to make him consul. So again, this is in the context of, of games and of extravagance and of kind of over-interest in, in the games. So he's uh, having people go out and keep the streets quiet so the horse gets a good night's sleep before the race. And again, at the end of this, it, it is said that he planned to make him consul. So Suetonius is putting a little bit more distance in than Dio did. It, it is said that. It is alleged that. No statement that he actually would have done it. So what's going on here? Um, what can we possibly say about this? Well, it could simply be madness or affectation. Um, I think it's worth noting that both of these stories, these versions are told in the context of an over-enthusiasm for arena games and sports. And this is guys as a very popularising ruler. Tiberius was really rather above you know, the, the bread and circuses. He wasn't a great giver of games or builder of buildings. And Gaius, I think, is quite deliberately, maybe because of his own interest in character and maybe also as a political tactic, is appealing very strongly to the common people and giving lots of games. Remember, he also tried to take elections from the Senate and give them back to the people. And so you could see him as a deliberately popularising emperor if you wish to. So possibly this is the sort of story that arises from an emperor too given to games, too much involved in the life of the arena. Can we also interpret this in a political context? Is this some attempt to criticise or humiliate the Senate? Remember uh, that I've already said, Dio 5920, he, he humiliates two of his consuls by breaking up their insignia of office, their fasces. Um, and note here that he promised or planned to make his horse consul, not that he actually did it, which is sometimes said. He obviously didn't actually make his horse a consul. Um, and you might imagine this, this arose perhaps in the context of a disdainful or dismissive remark to the Senate. You know, my horse could do a better job than you lot. And that sort of remark, maybe if it was ever made off the cuff, was a kind of bad joke, which would fit with his dark humour that we've seen earlier about wanting to wring people's necks and so on. You could see a Senate that was aggrieved and anxious and worried about its position and function in the, in the new world of Gaius. You could really take that remark to heart and remember it, so much so that when Suetonius and much later Dio come to write this stuff down, that story is still current. Uh, the historian Vinterling says this was a remark designed to insult and humiliate senators and other elites. By bestowing a high public office on his horse, Caligula aimed to show his underlings their work was meaningless, you know, so meaningless an animal could do it. Was it designed? Was it aimed? Was it just thoughtless? You know, we, in the end, we can't really know. 
Um, but if we want to wring anything out of this bizarre episode, I think we can see a real fracture between Gaius and his Senate, so much so that he's openly insulting the Senate by comparing them to, you know, my horse could do the job. And on the other hand, this popularising emperor given to the world of the arena and the games and um, giving his favourite horse jewels and purple blankets and so on is probably part of that world of very popularising gestures and entertainments.